you out of there and get the next person up. But you could use some of those things to springboard off of and just plant seeds. I was thinking about uh, being in Walmart this week and uh, uh, they have uh, Black Fridays coming. And if you ever been to a Black Friday, you may like it or you may hate it. I'm in the category of hate it. People are nasty. All in the spirit of Christmas. <laughs>
within this book because it's supernatural. God's Word 
God gives you an enlightenment. He shows you the things that will apply to your life and maybe to others. And so not only do I want to know this knowledge, but I also want to know how does it apply to my life. I saw a good example of that this morning, and I hope many of you recognize that, that uh, Brother Tim here gave out these little rubber bands and uh, says, uh, let your light shine. He's a seed planter. He's planting seeds. He's already beginning to do something with what he's learning. And that's a good thing. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, I don't know about you because I'm so filled with muscles. I couldn't <laughs> get it on. <laughs> and, uh, but I will keep it and I will give it to someone else. Pass the seed on. And when you pass it on to someone, uh, he was passing them out here in the congregation. And that's good. If you can't get it on, give it to someone else. And let them worry about getting it on. <laughs> That was good. Yeah, I just commend you for that. And uh, I'm sure God will be creative in his life and show other ways that he may share Christ and what's happened in his life. And so as we go on in verse 11, it says, And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now think about that. If you're understanding, you know, when you read it, you begin to understand things from the word. Your eyes are open. God has touched your life and he's drawing you into his presence so that he may speak to you in many different ways. <clears throat> but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. Very important. Think about that. Don't be, be surprised when you're out there and you start talking with people and they uh, begin to question you. You know, well, I've tried that. Well, I understand that. You know, sometimes uh, the people out there, they judge the church or they judge Christians by what they've seen in supposedly Christian's life. Is there anything but life? So uh, you're dealing with uh, a world that is now being confronted with great darkness. When I read the end of the story in the Bible, and we win. Amen. So we just keep our eyes and focus on the Lord. And so don't be surprised if that happens and don't be discouraged. And he goes on to say, oh, I, I read, I'll read it again in verse 12. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them, refusing to follow the things of God. Now, if you read the Gospels, you probably read the part where Many followed Jesus, but they got discouraged. They said, this is too hard. Who could live this life? And so uh, many turned back. And uh, the Bible goes on to say, God does not delight in those who turn back. There are very, there's a lot of disappointments in this life, but understand, you're not to be living in this world fully. You walk in this world, but you're not to be of the world. There's two realms. There's the the area of the natural life, and there's also the supernatural life. And that's what we've embraced. We've embraced that which is from above. And God is our Father. And God will lead us by His Spirit. And by that, knowing that, how do we enter into the fullness of God? Well, it's by the knowledge of who Jesus is and why He came, why He died, why he rose again, and putting our faith in all that he has done. In verse 13 it says, And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? <clears throat> many more, uh, many more, what do I got here? Oh, many more parables are, that he writes about in his word. And so as you read, you'll find there are other parables that he was talking about. In verse 14, it says, The sower sows the word. The Holy Spirit, when 
He came and He indwells us. He makes us those sowers and we sow the word to people's lives by telling them about Jesus and about all that He has done, all of His goodness and how it brings eternal life. Now, none of us come to the Lord thinking we're going to die and then we'll have eternal life. We understand there's a process. In verse 15, as we read, and they are the ones by the wayside. Now he begins to explain, and I want to use the word from here. The sower sows the word. That's us. We are sowers of the word. In uh, Luke 8, 11, it says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So we sow the word of God by our actions, by the way we live. Uh, I know that I spoken before about, you know, if opportunities arise, you share your faith, you share what Christ has done in your life, and you trust that God will take that seed that you're sharing and will give life to it. You don't always see instant growth. But here he goes on and he says, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in, in their hearts. So now we're going to see the different ground that the seeds falls on. Uh, and we're told, told in, the, in the, either, I think it's uh, Peter and it told in James, that Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeing who he may devour. And so he's, he's present. Now, we don't fully understand how he works, but we know that there is an enemy that will come against the preaching of the word. And it's pretty evident today. And then verse 16, it says, And these, and these likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time, and afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. <clears throat> Over the years, I, got, I have to say that I've witnessed probably every one of these areas uh, in my life, in the ministry, and uh, I've questioned, I said, Lord, what is the problem here to why so many stumble? Well, here's the answer. Why some, and we're going to see why some go on and some fall by the wayside. In verse uh, 17, he goes on and he said, <clears throat> and they have no, oh, I read, read that one, right? Yeah. All right. Verse 18, now these are the ones sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word and the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Now my question to you this morning, what kind of ground are you? If you go back and you examine yourself, this is like a mirror. The Word of God is like a mirror. How do you see yourself? Are you seeing yourself, well, maybe I was like that in the beginning, but I'm no longer like that. I am a hunger. I am a thirsting for the things of God. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the Word, accept it. Now, when you accept the Word, you don't know there's a process that the, you need to enter into. And that there's work to be done in that area in your life. But when the power of the Holy Spirit comes on you, He quickens to you that God's going to be with you and in you. When you're born again, God's Spirit comes in and indwells you. And He's going to guide you, teach you, and reveal His purposes and His plan. That's where we want to stand as believers, as a church, to know that God's Word is, the, is a means of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And those who hear the Word accept it 
and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Well, when you self-examine yourself, at the beginning you probably think, yeah, well, here was my thought when I first got saved and I entered the church and I came in I started hearing the word of God and I thought, how could I have missed this? It's so clear. And then I wondered, Jesus must be coming back. I mean, if he saved me, this must be the end that I heard about. And, uh, of course, I realize now it wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. And that God was going to work in my life, take me to places that I haven't even imagined. And then when I heard scriptures like this, I began to realize, especially I heard a lot preached on verse 20, uh, that uh, those who accept it, but I always heard it from the perspective of how much money you can get. It's not about money. It's about who you are in Christ. And the question is this, who are, who are you in Christ? Are you a light? Are you a purpose that wants to be spilled over and you want to touch others for the glory of God? I hope that you are. And he goes on in verse 21 and he said to them, there's a lamp brought to be put under a basket. So what are you doing? Are you, are you a light that's uh, under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. And so we're talking again about the light. Jesus said we're a light. And uh, we're to be a bright light. Now, the way I do things, probably you're going to be different than the way you do. You're witnessing or your life. For sure. Uh, Janice and I went shopping uh, uh, this past Tuesday, I believe, or Wednesday. And uh, when we were at the, uh, it was Tuesday, yeah. And when we were there, there's a young lady there. She looks... She never cracks a smile. Well, that's a challenge for me. <laughs> Maybe not for you. So, uh, she's bringing things up, and uh, she gets to the end, and she says, a uh, hundred and some dollars. Well, that was not a challenge for me. That was, oh, there goes my wallet. <laughs> and I said that to her. So she cracked a smile, and, uh, and I thought, no, she does have a smile. You know, it's so much easier to put a smile on your face. To be joyful about life. Are you happy about life? Yes. Yeah. I hope you are. Because you have everything to live for. And you have all the things that God has provided for you. If you would just look at them and say that you are blessed in Christ. No, those things that you see now with a new understanding, a new life are the blessings of God found in Ephesians chapter 1 which all of you are reading at least once a week and throughout this month about all the things that God has provided for those who see, receive Him and live for Him. Amen. And, uh, and Janice usually tells me, you know, tone it down. You know, you don't have to talk to everyone you see. Well, I like to talk to people. And uh, since I got saved, before I got saved, I wouldn't talk to you. Uh, I had to go to uh, Rhinelander this past week. And when I went by a, a building and it said, Bible Church. Oh, but I was going 45. <laughs> I think it was. And uh, I said, well, I'll catch it on the way back. There was a truck there, and I thought, well, you know, uh, if, they, if he's there, or who's ever there, I'll stop and talk to him. And so I went, took care of the things I had to take care of, and on my way back, he was there, just finished my lunch, swung in there, and went into the place, and uh, it was a church in process, they're building a new building. Of course, when I was getting ready to pull in there, I heard this voice. 
You don't have to talk to everyone. <laughs> you don't have to stop everyone. You know where that came from. There wasn't a devil. And so, but I stopped there and I was talking with the man and he was telling me what they were doing and he was just cleaning up from the service on Sunday and he said, boy, we were, we had about 90 people that came. It's not even finished. I looked around and what a beautiful building. And I mentioned to him, you know, you can have a beautiful building, but the people are the gift to the building. The people are the church. You know, we, we are the lights. And he said, they, he understood that, and we had fellowship. But then I left there, and uh, as I was going on my way, and I got to a place up in the, going on 51, there was an accident along the road. And it was like the Lord spoke to me that he had slowed me down, had me stop, because time frame, the time frame where I was there and to where I was going, I might have been in part of that accident. Now, that's just what, how I was receiving it. I told Jan about this. God speaks to us in those areas when he tells us slow down because something's ahead. Or he'll tell us some other things. Don't go that way because it may not be the best thing for you. Now, he never forces his way in speaking to us. He plants the seeds in different ways. Today, you may hear something and it may stir your heart to consider maybe it's, this is the time, this is the hour I should start getting serious about where I'm at in my faith. And uh, how I might apply that to my uh my life. And so I got in the line as we waited for the, the, everybody was there, all the police and so forth, and I don't know if they had to take the people out of the vehicles, but then I passed through, and it was affirmed, reaffirmed once again that God speaks to us in a very small, small voice. Did you receive that? Amen. It, was, it isn't allowed. He'll just nudge you. He won't force his way into your life. You must invite him in. And if you want to understand the parables of God, and you should be able to if you have received Christ into your heart, you simply ask the Lord, open my understanding so that I may be able to receive this, not just for myself, but for others. Now, I shared this with you, and maybe that will be a warning for, for some of you to... Listen closely, because God's always speaking. Another time, when Jan and I were going down to visit my daughter, down in Minneapolis, and we were going along at a good clip, and uh, all of a sudden we heard a, a big boom. And there was a semi coming our way, and a tire came off, and it was coming towards us. And the road was like this, and I swear to miss the tire that came this way, and all I could say was Jesus, and I was back up on the road, and we were going on. It wasn't my good driving, I can tell you that. Because all I saw in my own mind was our car flipping over, and uh, but the Lord, by His mercy and by His grace, caught us and put us back on that straight street. And uh, I just, the thing is, what I'm hearing in this message here, look at all these areas that could hinder. But look at the end of the story here where it says, you can bear fruit to the eternal life and you would be blessed if you follow the ways of the Lord. And so I just encourage you to tuck that into your, uh, your, your heart and allow these things to uh, begin to Bring forth life in you and life more abundantly. Now who said that? Jesus said it in John 10. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. The deceiver has come to destroy and kill. If Satan could take your life, you'd be a dead person right now. He does not have that power. You believe that? Yes. Jesus defeated the devil. He, he defeated the devil. We need to know that. And if Christ is in us, 
and we're in Christ, we're overcomers. Amen? Alright, let's read on here. Now it says in verse, I'm going to read verse 22. For these things, there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should be come to the light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Now let me let me ask you a question. How many of you have read this uh, parable before? Okay, there's a number. Not everyone. So how does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. By hearing. Romans 10, 17. How do we get all this knowledge? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. See, God said there's a process. Get into the process. Uh, life has a process. Uh, and you learn, you can learn through hard knocks, or you can learn by praying things through before you do things. Uh, there, have, there are many examples that uh, come to mind from time to time how God provided in our journey, and you're on a journey with the Lord. I remember as a young man uh, having a Bible and reading some of the things and wondering, how does this work in our lives? Is God real? Because I wasn't brought up in the church, but God made his, his life known to me uh, through circumstances and through prayer and through his purposes for my life. God has a purpose for your life. Uh, he goes on in verse 24. Then he said to them, listen, Jesus is saying this to you right now. He's in you and he's saying through my lips, through his word, then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use it, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And so my understanding of that, if you don't use what you have, you're going to lose it. In the Gospel of John 15, it would go along with this teaching. You would read it on your uh, when you're, your morning study or whenever you're studying the Word. Uh, verses 1 through uh, 15, I believe. And it talks about abiding in Him and His words abiding in you. That is the key to success in Christ. That He abides in you by His Word. Now, uh, this next parable is the one we're going to look at next week, and it talks about the parable of growing seed. And he said to them, The kingdom of God is, it, as, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep by night, and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts the sickle in, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. I think of an, uh, an illustration in my own life. When Jan, we had a, purchased our first home, I was going to plant a garden. And uh, there was a patch of ground on the outside, on the one side of the house. So I went out there and I raked it. And I went out there with seeds and I just threw them out there. And I said, grow. <laughs> I wasn't a Christian. I didn't, it wasn't, uh, I just threw them out there and I figured what will grow will grow. And it will have, Veggies or whatever. Well, that was a good illustration. The ground needs to be repaired. Uh, repaired right? Yeah. You have to turn it over. Uh, some of these 
young men that are working in different areas with cattle and so forth, there's a process. You have to feed them so that they win the prize. Right? We got a winner here. It's in the headlines all the time. <laughs> Good for you. You know the process of taking care of your animals. And it's everything. There's a process. And there's responsibility. Now, I took no responsibility for that seed I threw out there. I just expected it to grow. And guess what? I got exactly what I expected. Nothing. Because I really deep down knew that it wouldn't grow like that. But I was taking the shortcut. Everything, you cannot take shortcuts in life. You have to prepare yourself. And you have to think about what you're doing. For example, some of you young people, <coughs> Should God carry, did the Lord carry that coming back? You put a little way for a rainy day, the Bible says, and when that rainy day comes, you'll have it. You understand what I'm talking about? Money, compound interest, and things. If you do no planning, when you get out to the to a, a time frame in your life, a season in your life, and you want to do something, and you haven't done any planning. Mother and dad may not come alongside you and say, here it is. You're going to say, did you plan for this? Planning is important. So the next part we're going to do is going to be the, the parable of the mustard seed. And we're going to look at that. And we're going to see how, though it's the smallest seed, and yet it brings forth great harvest. Let's bow our heads. Amen. I'm going to read from, uh, I mentioned this last week, uh, about prayer. And this is our pro closing prayer this morning. And I want you to listen closely to what the Word says here. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen? Amen. All right. Take time to go over this, these uh, scriptures this week. And as I encourage you to read the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and tie those things together. It's precept upon precept. You know, if I say something about pertaining to this area, there's other scriptures that will tie into it. You know what the Bible says? It says that if you will call upon the Lord, He will answer you. It's just like for salvation. Jesus said, believe that I have come to bring salvation to mankind. And that if you will accept that and confess that, He will change your life and He will give you life eternal. Because it says it's the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. So when you talk to people, I was thinking about this, you know, uh, tell them about the goodness of God and what it will do for their life. Tell them how it's changed your life. That will transform people's lives. That is the power of the gospel. Amen? Amen? The singers will come. Can I stand up here? Please. Before we sing our last song, I just want to take a second. You know, yesterday was Veterans Day. And so I just want to acknowledge we have several men in, the, in our, our congregation, our family that have served. And we just want to thank them. I won't make you stand up and say, oh, you know my name. And we know. Well, let me, did any of you back in your Did you get your free pizza yesterday from Super One? <laughs> they didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good feat. Big pizza. And uh, someone called me up and they said, it's Veterans Day, and they're giving out free pizzas at uh, Super One. I said, I'm up and I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then they said their free coffee at uh, Quick Trip. 
And I said, I'm going for my first cup of coffee at Quick Trip. I love it. Praise <laughs> God, you deserve it. Yeah, I'm so Let me pray for the best. Let me pray. Let me pray. Oh, Father, I do thank you for those that served and all the men that have given their lives and, uh, and served in other areas of service and uh, other ages and never, other times. Lord, we're so thankful that we live in a country that's free. But it's from men and women that have served and given their lives and, uh, and honored this country and for what it stands for. Lord, may there be an awakening in this nation for, this, uh, for us to see that it's by your grace and your love that we are where we're at, even at this hour. So we thank you and ask a blessing on all, all those who served in many different ways. Not just those who are on the phone.